with populism, uh, we're talking about a term that sometimes Putin is called a populist, Ronald Reagan. I'm talking about a populist tradition uh, that really begins in the United States in the 1880s, 1890s, and that's where the word comes from. And it migrates over to Europe in 1970s and 1980s and becomes a big deal in the 1990s. And what it consists of is uh, a politics that's built upon a contrast, a conflict between the people and the establishment or elite. I'm just an average American. But I'm an American American. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. It's very hard to have a, a dissenter, somebody from either the far left, the far right, or a third party burst onto the scene. And that only happens when a prevailing worldview suddenly comes under attack. Populists of the 1890s, that's the time when you have laissez-faire capitalism, the idea that all you have to do is let, the, let it rip. Let the corp big corporations do what they want and everything will be fine. It's not working. The first group that says it's not working are these populists in the farm states in the 1880s and 1890s. And the major Republican and Democratic leaders both dismiss them. When the parties themselves don't get it, when the leaders of the parties, then you get populism. You get Perot and Buchanan in 1992. They try again in 1996, but by then you have the internet boom. So, you know, that's the end of populism for a while. And you have the war on terror in the early 2000s. But when the Great Recession hits, uh, suddenly again there's an upsurge, because that seems to say that the prevailing ideas are not working. You know, there's something wrong, but the leaders are not listening to us on this issue or that issue. So that's Trump and Sanders, again, both dissenters. And, you know, to the astonishment of me and a lot of people, the, these guys end up, uh, Trump winning the nomination and Sanders almost. And now we have <laughs> Trump as our president. So it only happens at discrete intervals. They're always interrelated. You can't uh, separate them. Now, I mean, people who say, well, the, the Trump voters are all racist, uh, they, they don't get it. I mean, there, there is a racist, there's a nativist element that's been part of uh, this core group of voters. People who voted for George Wallace in eight, 1968, 1972, Christian Coalition in the 1990s. It sort of moves through our politics, like a, you know, a, a large rodent would move through a pi python. You see it. And it takes different forms at different times. Sometimes it's about religion. Sometimes it's about gun rights. Sometimes it's about terror. In the, in the wake of the Great Recession, a lot of the issues are economic. But you still have illegal immigrants. Why are these people in our country? Um, you still have all the other things connected to it. So it's not, it's hard to make that distinction, but people who say it's only one or the other are really making a mistake. They're really misunderstanding what American po politics is. We'll never be able to call this country our own until it's a country without. Without what? Without Negroes, without alien foreigners, without Catholics, without Freemasons. What's wrong with the Masons? I'm a Mason. Hey, that fellow's talking about me. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? Well, obviously, I worry about what's going to happen uh, in the United States now uh, w with Trump and whether this third element of populism, the outgroup, uh, the illegal immigrants, uh, Muslims, uh, whether that can be the basis for a very scary kind of logic where we have p uh, terrorist attacks, where Trump then says, well, you see, I was justified all along in taking measures X, Y, and Z, but we, in addition, now we have to do A, B, C, and D, and we get a, you know, a much more repressive uh, society than we've had. So it could have a very unhappy ending. These are the people who are trying to take over our country. Now you know them. You know what they stand for. And it's up to you and me to fight them!